Welcome back to Dev Talks. And yes, Flyvox is still enjoying his vacation. I got to see a lovely photo of his beach view. So we're very jealous, but he's off enjoying that. Toady is back with me today. Thank you, Toady, for jumping back in. I'm really excited for this Dev Insight videos, economy and production. It's a long video, but I'm hoping that means it's full of insights. How are you doing today? I'm so excited. Also yeah. very envious of the nice sunny beach as I look outside my dreary window. But um, <laughs> you know, I guess the man deserves some rest, I suppose. Yeah. And, uh, we yeah. get to have a 10 minute education section session on economics 101. <laughs> so. I guess so. I guess so. Well, let's mm -hmm. get to it. Okay. <laughs> Let's get down to business and talk some economy. How many people are going to say to defeat the Huns? <laughs> the economy in City Skylines 2 has been remade from the ground up. We have strived for more realism in the simulation of He does sound excited. As well as businesses <laughs> yeah. But I do think city. it's the music, maybe. We want to create a system that is complex. No, he sounds like very complicated. committed, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like he knows this. Yeah. Like it's, it's an area of interest so for him. It helps new mm -hmm. players as well as newly found cities. The government subsidies help new players in the early hours of the game by helping the economy of the city. Okay, the okay, that's uh, good. Cease eventually when it's, your city becomes Yeah, it's so smart. And I think it's balanced really well. will reach this point uh, earlier in the game as they can uh, optimize their city uh, to their liking. Interesting. The households receive uh, government subsidies in the form of unemployment benefits as well as financial aid. Okay. I love that we can click on the individual the house and get that, that data. Many, yes. Many moving parts in the economy, and this I love that we can go into this much detail the with the taxes. As well as the citizens react to things. We wanted to give it great depth so that it serves the game now and in the future. Nice. So long-term game. Comprise right. Children, That's teens, exciting. Adults and oh, this seniors. is new New Zealand. These age groups has their own preferences what comes to ah, the money Biffa. and resources <laughs> that they want to buy. When households look for suitable places to live, they look for a place where they can get resources, aka shopping places. They also value the proximity of jobs as well as schools. The for man example, in the gold if suit you have again. A family with children, they prefer to Such a clutch to outfit. Yeah. Possible. Might have to be my first cosplay. Different no, it should be Flybox's first cosplay. Can we sign that? Space. Sign him up for that. <laughs> Single households <laughs> can live comfortably in low rent housing or in one of those tall apartment towers. But if you have family with children, they prefer the larger spaces like uh, detached houses or apartment buildings. Yeah, sure. If the citizens can't find a suitable place to live because they are poor and cannot leave the city, they can become homeless. And sometimes you can see. Oh wow! It actually says homeless right there. In parks. So in sad. City. Oh wow. In the case of industries and the businesses uh. overall in your city, the industrial companies hey, that's take my city. resources and then turn them <laughs> into other types How fun of is that? that they then ship to companies that sell them to their end users. This usually means the citizens in your city. Some of the goods are also transported outside of the city into the outside connections. The industrial companies want to be close to where they get their resources but they also want to be close to the places that they then send the goods. I feel like so much producing. of this stuff is the smoother the transition from getting the like, resources. Everything wants to be close to everything. <laughs> shipping them to other right. Companies it's going to be really users. hard. I mean, but it's like that in City Skylines 1 as well. It's going to be tough to and it's logical. Yeah. Yeah. The function in your oh, city. that's so cool. Yeah, they look the so fun. Increase their production, and this also means that they can hire more workers. If the economic situation becomes bad, the companies will reevaluate their production, and this means that they will scale it down and lay off unnecessary workers. That would be wow. great. Why can I say it? Like, <laughs> I, is it? Did, was that honk in the video? Okay. 
Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's funny. Oh, I'm continually so like charmed by their personalities. Well, want to be close oh, to 100%. Yeah. I want to be friends with everybody. The yeah. aspect of their existence is to be close to the customers themselves. So a lot of commercial companies benefit from the proximity of residential areas. And it is always the people who buy the stuff that keep these companies afloat. The customers are important for the commercial companies because they are the ones who choose what to buy and where. So if the commercial companies are located far away from the potential customers, they are less likely to get that food traffic. I wonder th what that means shop. for our, our ability to build rural areas. Are they at selling? Yeah. Industrial companies, their thing is that the workers, yeah, like I guess like rich. Look at that! The more <laughs> I love that the branding. Some of these logos are in great the for these businesses. Of, mm -hmm. Commercial companies, the the workers. Banhammer uh, Bank. Are That's awesome. Like service, and the better they are, That's the so more funny. they can service, which means that more people can be in the shop. I wonder if you rename a building, if it renames it in the person's the product is info duber as well. Like in real life when you have oh, that's a good question. That yeah. Sell for cheaper than small corner stores. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> can we use that? <laughs> so funny. Great. The office companies are a form of industrial companies. Offices use electronics to make software and they can then send this software to other office companies who turn it into media, banking and telecom. That's so We've cool. We also wanted to mm -hmm. update the companies in City Skylines too. And one of those updates was that we wanted to have a more realistic number of workers. In I think people company. are going to be really happy so with that. So now you're going to have office towers with well, hundreds Look of Look at workers. that. Yeah. Wow. That's in so City great. Skylines one, we had industrial specializations that you could zone in, uh, just like the normal industries. But in City Skylines 2, the specialized industry areas include farming, where you have livestock, cotton farming, vegetable farming, and grain farming. I wonder if we actually see vegetables. Then we have stone, ore, and <laughs> mineral mining. Yeah, well yeah, I guess, you know, we kind of just seen trees. these. And now you Fields have of stuff. industry areas <laughs> yeah. that you create by first placing the hub building uh, on the map and then creating okay. the area where that hub building operates. Yeah. I so love our ability to draw these out like this. City, yeah. You can just create an area uh, over the oil field and you will soon see different types of oil and i love that you just kind of like appear and the little area. things moving around on their own oh, yeah now i get it now i, get it. Now I can, can visualize oh, that's so cool yeah area. you give it a little uh -huh. area and then you say Unlike here do stuff and it just does stuff oh, my gosh the cute little chickens <laughs> they will instead just adjust <laughs> their production according to the situation in your city if there is a surplus for any goods in your city, the companies will throughout this them to we've hear we've heard him the say that they them say outside connections um, the less profit how much because like they're always they're saying you know the game will adjust its will this the game time. will adjust its that so it really sounds like we have a lot of influence to offer but in the background the game is just constantly These trying to balance itself which is really nice the weight of the makes it that is comforting to know yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The yeah. Loan system That's a beautiful fountain. Has been reworked. You can now take one loan wow. and the loan limit increases as you reach new milestones. This is cool too. Also yeah. Just the loan, loan thing. It's really pay. intuitive. You can either lend more money or pay back some or all of the loan. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Also, overhaul the tax system. You can adjust the residential taxes by education level. And I want to know what residents they're products. taxing at two percent here. Incentivize certain businesses in your city. You can help them by adjusting their taxes. And if you want to really help the production of these companies, you can subsidize it by setting negative taxes. 
Each city service That's really cool. has a service budget that you can adjust, and this service budget affects wow. the city services uh, efficiency. This. Some city services also have so service fees yeah. that can be adjusted, and adjusting these will affect the behavior of the citizens oh. who use these services. In the production the tab, fees are so you helpful see all early of the on resources in the game you'll see how much money you have made through taxes on those products as well as their deficit this is service. really great to get all this data yeah and not have to have a wiki up beside you while you're playing where those yeah. products are used and that's that <laughs> <Red. laughs> that's how we feel too yeah. thank you yeah. Doesn't make Thanks me feel so watching. bad now. Wait, is that <laughs> it? Is it done? I feel like I was so enthralled by having someone trying to teach me the things that I had no idea that 10 ideas, 10 minutes had already gone by. No, that didn't feel that long. Um, but there was a lot to cover in this video because mm -hmm. they. We learned, you know, the dev diary itself was so hefty, mm -hmm. but I'm really glad for this video because what I can do, I can see myself going back and referencing this video more than the video on Monday to yeah. kind of look to see, oh, where was that? You know, how do I do this thing? And like I said on Monday, all of this, if you take the big picture view, it all makes logical sense. Yeah. And it all fits. I think the thing is switching that mindset of gameplay. And it's also nice to see, just like you pointed out, that all the places they're saying, well, the game's going to do this. Well, the game's going to do that. So the game is always seeming to work in our favor versus mm. against us. And I think that's a change from CS1 um, in the way of the economy, because it's like they're doing everything that they can. The game is a simulation to support us being successful in our city, which I think is comforting to know that you have that little extra help. Yeah as you go through one comment we got on monday's video which i thought was really interesting that they haven't addressed at all was um and i can't remember who commented so i'm so sorry but uh, someone had made a comment that so the homes want to be near shopping and schools and work and all that and we know there's different types of commercial buildings you know you've got grocery stores and gas stations and shopping and mm -hmm these kinds of things is it going to be at like cs1 where it's like near any commercial will satisfy it or do we need to be paying attention to making sure there's a grocery store close by there's a ah. bank close by like because we really haven't seen how the buildings grow in that way are they all random like cs1 and i know you've played it so you might know this and you can't tell us which is fine but like i do think it's interesting that comment and it does have me thinking about that too because you know the game has been so realistic and detailed so far yeah is that an area where they've kind of gone basic or do we have control over the types of commercial buildings more than our whack-a-mole way yeah. right? like, the what? dev diary touched like the actual written diary touched on that a little bit um it did talk about it used a grocery store as an example so it said that um when you so like when you color in your zoning so you color it in blue right so you're like okay i want commercial to be here it says um, and I'm really kind of dumbing this down, but, but it says that the building will grow in to start satisfying the demand and the company who's going to be in that building isn't chosen right away. So you see like, not for sale signs, but you see like signs that are blank, that are like not a company's name. And then it talks about how the companies choose where they're going to be. And one of the factors is they have a slight weighted preference towards an area where that product is not already being sold. 
So they said if it was in a neighborhood that didn't have a grocery store, for example, it would be more likely for a grocery store to pop up. Um, so essentially we won't run into the problem hopefully where you zone leisure and you get like four gyms right next to each other which was so annoying in cs1 at least for me because i always mm -hmm. like to make sure that i had a variety, variety of like yeah you know the karaoke bar and the gym and the beauty salon and you know making sure there was like every type of building that's very cool that the simulation is going to be thinking in that way so yeah. Um, that's going to be really interesting to see. And I, we're looking at right now, all the different, you know, signage, I think in CS1, a lot of players didn't really like all the signage cause they were kind of, <laughs> they were like really cartoony, right? <laughs> really cartoony. Yeah. These look like actual put together brands. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, so I'm not minding it at all. Yeah. Um, now that I'm seeing the branding of these close up, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think that's cool. And that is another cool detail of the, um, the buildings being having the blank signage. And then when the, the company moves in, then you see what it is, you know, yeah. um, over time. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. Um, yeah. And like you were saying, um, is the amount of it's what's the mod that makes it so everything's like realistic? Is it realistic population or something for CS1? Right. Yes. I don't know what the mod is, but yeah, it seems pop. like in the realistic population, it seems like from what we're seeing on the in the screen here, when we're seeing the numbers of employees and households, it seems like that's now built in that again, just playing into that realism like you know you see a more realistic number of employees and residences which is is really nice to see yeah um, yeah so. and i i worry a little bit that the like community at large will have it framed as oh they've taken things from all of these mods but i i really think that they've taken things from the real world and that just happens to also be what the mods did um because you know they've also got more simulated realistic time and yes there was a mod for that but i think that they i i would suspect right this is a total guess on my part but i would suspect that they've done that to simulate the real world rather than someone just scrolled through the workshop and said oh yes realistic time let's put that in so um, right. Yeah. Right. For sure. Because I think, you know, um, all of us were asking for these things and mm -hmm. that's why the modders created them. Right. Yeah. So they are listening to the community and these chickens are so cute. Yeah, these they are pretty cute. cute. I've never zoomed in that far. I should go look oh, at my chickens. <laughs> cute. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm so I know everyone is just ready to get their hands on this game mm -hmm. and each week we're learning more and more. This week was definitely heavy, yeah. um, a lot to think about. It was almost like I felt like we got the economy and the industries in one dev diary, but I understand they're so synergistic in yeah. CS2. You kind of have to put them together because it's it impacts everything on how your city makes money and yeah. that fountain is so beautiful um <laughs> so yeah i we got a lot but <laughs> we needed to get it all in one shot i i understand now why they did that because they just you know they're synergistic yeah completely yeah and so. we've got four more weeks after this one of dev diary goodness to go Wow. Yeah. This has gone by so quickly, you know, when the game was first announced, it felt, it felt really far away. Mm -hmm. And now it's right around the corner and it's so exciting. It's <laughs> I'm true. I'm so ready. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so like, it feels like everything that has happened until now has, has happened very quickly. But then at the same time, on the other side of it, like looking forward to October 24th, it feels like that's eons away. So, right. Yeah. yeah I can't I wait can't. until we're there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's yep. going to be great. Yeah. I did love this service fee thing. This mm -hmm. is new. We didn't have that in CS1. So, I think that's really great. And just there's all these different 
um, like the government subsidies and you know it's just nice to have all these different things helping you out and then you can really get into all these details and all the data that we get is just you can really get lost in this part of the game if you want to yeah but it's nice to know that the game's really gonna help help like manage that for you so that's really cool yeah yeah really Thanks, everyone, again, for joining us for another episode of Dev Talks. Thanks again, Toadie, for filling in for Flyvox. It's been so fun just to have these casual conversations with you about the game and mm. dig into your viewpoint and knowledge being that you played um, the game already. So that's so helpful for everyone listening. And I really appreciate your your own insight as we covered <laughs> this insight video of 10. It's a 10 minute video today. It was yeah. really long. Yeah, it's been great. It's been really, really fun. It's nice to, um, it's nice to have someone to bounce the ideas off of rather than, uh, you know, I feel like when I'm reading through these PDFs, studying, I feel like I'm studying for an exam sometimes, <laughs> highlighting things. And yeah, it's been nice. It's been great. I appreciate you having me. Good. Well, we have loved having you and you're welcome to come back anytime you want to. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you again. Um, Fly will hopefully be back with me on Monday. That's the plan. Um, so we will shoot for that. Um, and I hope everyone has a joyful day and I'll catch you next time.